Most professional consoles have a feature called VCAs. This stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier, which refers to the way these work in analog consoles. Digital consoles have DCAs, or Digital Controlled Amplifiers, even though most digital consoles will just say VCA instead, since it's such an ingrained part of our audio vocabulary. But they operate the same way, so we'll just say VCA in this training. So a VCA is a way to control multiple faders with a single fader, so it's kind of a remote control for a whole set of input faders. But the thing about VCAs is that they're not actual output buses. They simply control the faders of the inputs. Now, this is different than a subgroup, and when you assign channels to a subgroup, it's actually sending the signal through an output bus, which can then be routed to the main mix or sent right out of the console. And you can also insert things like EQ and compression on a subgroup because it's a real audio path. Now, VCAs are not an audio bus. You can't route them anywhere and you can't insert anything on them. But when you assign a set of faders to a VCA, that one fader is going to control all of those other faders. For instance, you could assign all of your drum channels to one VCA, and that will turn your entire drum mix up or down. Or if that VCA is turned all the way down, it would be like turning down the faders for all those channels. Now, many consoles will either have eight or 10 VCAs, which let you control different parts of your mix all on one set of faders. And this can be incredibly helpful if you have a lot of inputs, like 40 or 50 or more, having control over all of them with only 10 faders just makes things way faster and easier. Especially if, say you have your backup vocals all perfectly mixed, but you want to turn them up or down for one song, you just turn that VCA up or down instead of reaching over and muting four or five or however many channels. Or if the drums and guitars need a different balance between one song and another, you could easily just move two VCA faders instead of all the drum faders and guitar faders. And for some shows, that can be a lot. For one of the bands I tour with, that would be like 20 channels just for drums and guitars. It's just way easier and faster to use two faders. Now, another helpful situation just has to do with digital mixers in general. One of the ways digital consoles save space is to have banks of faders. That means that even though there might only be 16 faders on the surface of the console, those faders can switch between different inputs or outputs. So they could be showing channels 1 through 16, but with a push of a button, they can switch to channels 17 to 32. Now, this can get confusing and can also just be a pain. So if you have your entire mix controlled by eight VCAs, you could just have those VCAs up during a show and not have to be switching banks all the time. This can allow you to stay focused on the mix because you're dealing with way less button pushing. VCAs control relative volume. By that I mean if the VCA is at unity, it's not going to put all your faders automatically at unity. It just means that it won't be boosting or cutting anything. But if you go down to minus three on the VCA, it will drop all the faders assigned to it by three dB. So if a channel is at zero, it will actually sound like minus three. And if another channel fader is already at minus six, it would actually sound like minus nine. And apart from changing the fader levels, VCAs can also control the mutes. This is another useful tool that I use all the time. Muting a VCA will mute all of the channels assigned to it. And since I use VCAs to mix a lot and have the entire mix assigned to my set of VCAs, it's really easy to just use those few buttons to mute and unmute all of my channels.